a staggering volume of water, 350 quintillion gallons, is present in the world's oceans. Even if the bucket we throw into the sea only holds water, this doesn't prove the existence of thriving ecosystems hidden beneath the waves. It serves as a reminder of the immense cosmic realm's unfathomable wonders. Our explorations are just a tiny piece of the cosmos overall, but they have already found scores of exoplanets that may be habitable. Today, we're pondering life on entirely foreign planets as we explore the enigma of the most intriguing Kepler worlds. Scientists look for twin Earths, planets that are similar to our own, in their search for potentially habitable planets. A twin Earth has a size that is comparable to our own, which increases the likelihood that its surface is made of rocks. The planet must also orbit a star similar to our Sun in size and radiation output while retaining the ideal distance within the habitable or Goldilocks zone. Kepler 452b. The first Earth-like planet discovered circling a star similar to the Sun was Kepler 452b, which may be an excellent contender for habitability. There's a reason why it was dubbed the most Earth-like planet ever found back in 2015 by astronomers. Kepler 452 is a G-type star that is almost the same temperature as the Sun and is 1.5 billion years older than the Sun. The exoplanet receives around 10% more solar energy than Earth does, despite the star's brightness being 120% greater than the Sun's and its diameter being somewhat larger than the Sun's. There is a more than 50% likelihood that this super-Earth, which is 1.6 times the size of our globe, is a rocky planet. Even the two planets' orbits resemble one another. Kepler 452b's period of orbit is 385 days, while Earth has a 365-day orbital period. Kepler 452b is situated in the habitable region of its star, which is about 5% farther away than the distance between Earth and the Sun. Because the planet spent 6 billion years in the star's habitable zone, scientists think it had a significant advantage over Earth in the evolution of life. Naturally, this assumes that Kepler 452b has all the necessary elements for life to begin developing on its surface in the first place. However, we've now learned that Kepler satisfies several of those requirements. According to one study, an exoplanet is habitable if its atmosphere contains CO2 concentrations comparable to those seen on Earth. So, how would life be on this strange world? The planet would probably have a stronger surface gravity since it is more massive than Earth. People would need to adjust to their altered weight in the new environment, feeling almost twice as heavy as they do on our planet. Initially, mobility would be a problem for humans, but over time, we would adapt, allowing evolution to proceed in its usual way. According to a former NASA astronaut, our bodies would gradually strengthen as they adapted to their new environment, much like firefighters lifting heavy loads. Our bones would become more resilient as a result of increased physical activity, allowing us to resist the strong gravitational pull towards the ground. Over centuries, children would be born with bodies that were more physically resilient than those of newborns on Earth. But not everything would be altered. Kepler 452b would experience weather similar to that of Earth in terms of surface temperature and sunshine due to its current proximity to the star. The primary energy source for plants would still be photosynthesis, and they would continue to develop at a rate and intensity similar to what is seen on Earth. The exoplanet may have a heavy atmosphere, water on its surface, and active volcanoes, according to scientists' speculation. Kepler 452b is a very attractive candidate for Earth 2.0 if most projections are accurate, but that could change quickly. In around 500 million years, the planet may undergo a runaway greenhouse effect, which is the same phenomenon that turned Venus into a hot planet by accumulating large amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, making it 90 times thicker than Earth's. Nevertheless, that is 500 million years, which is more than enough time for humans to colonize it and refer to it as their homeworld. Although Kepler 452b seems intriguing, it's not the only Kepler world that exhibits potential, and it's also not by much. It would take 1,800 years for light to travel to this exoplanet. But what if we use the quickest thing ever produced by humans? The Parker Solar Probe is soaring at a pace of 120 miles per second, 190 kilometers per second, breaking its speed records as it gets closer to our sun. Although this is a remarkable accomplishment, it is still only 0.063% of the speed of light. The probe would still need to travel 1,800 light years in a staggering 2.8 million years if we assumed a direct route from Earth to the exoplanet Kepler 452b. Kepler 186f. Red dwarf star Kepler 186 is located in the constellation Cygnus, 500 light years from Earth. Here, in the habitable zone of a far off star, the first Earth sized exoplanet was found, according to research. Since then, Scientists are certain that there are other planets in the universe with a diameter comparable to Earth and that some of them might have conditions that would permit the presence of liquid water on their surfaces. The size of Kepler 186f is only somewhat larger than that of our planet. 
This extraterrestrial world has an orbital period of 130 days and is located outside the habitable zone. As a result, Kepler-186f receives roughly one-third of the heat energy from the Sun that Earth does, making its circumstances more like those on Mars. But rather than being a hardship, this disparity presents a special benefit. Strong solar flares, which can double a red dwarf's brightness in a matter of minutes, are known to occur. However, the Kepler-186 star is considerably less massive, brighter, colder, and smaller than the Sun. Therefore, even if the M-type star frequently undergoes radiation outbursts, the exoplanet may be far enough away to avoid the potentially fatal effects. Kepler-186f's atmosphere, in addition to the planet's distance from its star, affects the possibility of liquid water and the potential for life. The exoplanet's current location might suggest that there is frozen water on the surface. But because it is bigger than Earth, it has a denser atmosphere that may hold and disperse heat, possibly warming the ocean. The four other planets in the Kepler-186 system, Kepler-186b, Kepler-186c, Kepler-186d, and Kepler-186e, are only about half as big as our planet and have extremely brief orbital periods, 4 days, 7 days, 13 days, and 22 days, respectively. As a result, these extremely hot inner star companions are inhospitable to life as we know it on Earth. In the present, it would take 780,000 years to travel to Kepler-186f. But suppose we develop a spaceship with a 90% limit on the speed of light at some point in the distant future. Our descendants would set foot on Kepler-186f in roughly 550 years. What would that be like for them? The red dwarf star Kepler-186 is 25 times fainter and smaller than the Sun. The star would be as bright as our sun an hour before dusk if you were standing on the exoplanet's surface at noon. According to scientists, the planet maintains a steady axial tilt, allowing it to have a consistent climate and predictable seasons, just like on Earth. Based on calculations, astronomers have discovered that Kepler-186f's axial tilt has been constant for a very long time, tens of millions of years. Such stability is essential because an unpredictable tilt might have disastrous effects, turning a planet that might support life into one that is unfriendly and arid. Consider Mars, where its current unfavorable conditions may be the result of an unstable tilt. Some of the best contenders in the ongoing hunt for the ideal Goldilocks planet are frequently discovered by accident. Kepler 1649c Kepler 1649c was mistakenly identified as a false positive exoplanet before being unintentionally found in 2020. Following a reassessment of prior data, there is still much that scientists don't understand about this planet, including its atmosphere. However, Kepler 1649c receives 75% more starlight than Earth and has an orbital period of just 19.5 days, which may result in temperatures comparable to those on Earth. Surface temperatures on Kepler 186f would be roughly minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 39 degrees Celsius if it didn't have a heat trapping atmosphere. Despite the unfavorable appearance, Earth's temperatures would be lower without greenhouse gases, hovering around 0 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 18 degrees Celsius. Kepler 186f would still need more greenhouse gases to make up for this disparity, even if the atmospheres of the two planets were equal. Numerous additional planets in the galaxy, including Trappist 1f, Trappist 1d, Tea Garden c, and Toy 700d, are similar to Earth in terms of temperature or size. These exoplanets are substantially closer to us than other planets. Kepler 1649c appears to be out of reach at this point because it is 470,000 light years away. When the time comes, however, it would be a trip worth doing because none of these nearby planets can compare to the special mix observed on Kepler 1649c. In addition to perhaps having our planet's size and temperature, this amazing Exoplanet also appears to be securely positioned within the star's habitable zone, making it a very remarkable discovery. Kepler 1649b, a second planet in the star system, is around 8% larger than Earth but is situated significantly nearer to the Red Dwarf. There may be a third planet in the system hidden by the highly rare 4 to 9 orbit period ratio between the two planets. We will soon receive further information about the habitability of these worlds from the next generation of observatories. In the meantime, we'll investigate yet another remarkable astronomical object hidden 1,100 light years away in the constellation Lyra. Kepler 442b. Kepler 442b orbits a K type star at roughly half the distance between the Earth and the Sun, every 112 days. The well being of any potential life forms that may exist on the exoplanet may be affected in a number of ways by such a near contact. 
Planets that are in close proximity to their host stars frequently become tidally locked, creating a potentially hostile environment for life on their surfaces. Kepler 442b, on the other hand, is located just outside the region where the star's gravitational pull may result in tidal locking. In general, K-type stars are fainter than the Sun. The star itself, Kepler 442, is a smaller, colder star. As a result, the exoplanet orbiting it is in an ideal location, about 0.4 astronomical units from its peaceful host star. A sweet spot in the hunt for habitable planets, according to scientists, is K-type stars. They have a good mix of qualities despite not being as brilliant as G-type stars or as long-lived as M-type red dwarfs. At least 1,000 K stars are only found within 100 light-years of our Sun. The lifespan of these orange dwarfs ranges from 15 to 45 billion years. And orange dwarfs only increase in luminosity by roughly 10% to 15% during the course of our Sun's estimated 10 billion year lifetime. The Earth can become uninhabitable in about 1 to 2 billion years, thanks to our Sun. How hopeful is Kepler 442b then? Based on their potential for habitability, astronomers prefer to classify planets. By taking into account several aspects, the revised scale known as the Comparative Habitability Index outperforms earlier techniques. Both the planet's composition, which favors rocky planets, and the eccentricity of its orbit, which influences the stability of the light and heat received from the star, are taken into account. The albedo, which gauges how much solar energy is reflected by the planet's atmosphere, is also taken into account by the scale. Even when the orbit is erratic, the sum of these elements is significant in determining habitability. The comparative habitability index scales from 0 to 1, just like the Earth's similarity index, with a higher value signifying a higher possibility for habitability. Kepler 442b has been given a value of roughly 0.84 on both scales. Unfortunately, the exoplanet is too dark and small to be directly photographed by our present telescopes, let alone traveled to by the fastest spacecraft ever developed, which would take 1,700,000 years. Looking at its biosphere is all we can do, though. Kepler 442b stood out as very noteworthy in one study that looked at radiation levels received by potentially habitable exoplanets. It receives almost enough sunlight to sustain a sizable biosphere that the James Webb Space Telescope might be able to spot. We might also want the JWST to continue its investigation of two other fascinating exoplanets in the same constellation, as it analyzes this planet. Kepler 62e Kepler 62f and Kepler 62e are two planets in the Kepler 62 star system that are peacefully able to sustain life. Kepler 62b, Kepler 62c, and Kepler 62d, the system's final three planets, orbit the K-type star too closely, making them overheated and unsuitable for supporting life. Kepler 62e and 62f are particularly fascinating to astronomers because they may contain a lot of water. These exoplanets rate 0.83 and 0.69 on the Earth's similarity index, respectively. While Kepler 62f has a longer orbital period of 267 days, Kepler 62e completes an orbit around its star every 122 days. Kepler 62e is thought to have a heavily overcast atmosphere with a year-round warm and humid climate that extends to the planet's polar regions. It is an incredibly favorable environment for hosting life because of these factors. A 2014 study raised the potential of a sizable moon orbiting Kepler 62e. If so, there would be a greater chance that the exoplanet would be a habitable planet. This is because the development of sophisticated life requires huge moons. They assist in controlling the planet's rotation and axial tilt through tidal forces, which directly affect the planet's climate patterns. Moons also operate as a shield, protecting the planet and its inhabitants by deflecting or absorbing any impacts from asteroids or comets, despite being further away. Kepler 62f would indicate reduced surface temperatures, but it still has the potential to support life. However, the lack of land, metals, and the essential element of fire makes it difficult to imagine a society with advanced technology. Metalworking techniques, which are essential for technological development, would appear to be impossible. Despite this, the complexity of nature leaves room for the possibility of life forms that are far more innovative than we are and capable of outpacing our current technological advancements, perhaps even if they are subaquatic. The earliest intelligent extraterrestrial species would likely inhabit these unusual worlds 1,850,000 years from now, if humans chose to send a message to them with the Parker Solar Probe. However, if we sent a radio signal now, it wouldn't take long for it to reach the two exoplanets, just 1,200 years, on a vast cosmic scale. While Kepler 62e and Kepler 62f do not yet represent ideal twin Earths, the constantly evolving nature of planetary systems offers the possibility of profound transformation on these planets. 
even while our own planet was once fully covered by seas, it over time evolved into a varied globe with both land and water. Researchers think about how these exoplanets may change in the future, speculating that they too could develop into habitats like Earth in the future, with a harmonic interaction between vast continents and surrounding oceans. It's logical to suppose that if there were any living things on these two exoplanets, they may be extremely advanced, since we already have strange things like flying fish here on Earth. The enormous distances required have proven to be one of the main obstacles in investigating faraway worlds. To address this issue, we might not need to wait for extremely sophisticated telescopes. According to data from Kepler and the European Space Agency, half of the universe's sun-like stars may harbor potentially habitable rocky planets, and some of these stars may be lurking in our galaxy. This suggests that there is a 95% possibility that at least one Earth twin is concealed within 20 light years of our solar system. How long do you suppose it will be until we discover a fully habitable planet in the immediate proximity of our solar system? What impact will this finding have on the development of human history? Comment below with your thoughts and let us know. For more engaging space videos, be sure to subscribe to our channel.